Hi there. In this short video, we will be addressing the approach to a patient with multiple injuries. When addressing a patient with multiple injuries, one follows a systematic approach that prioritizes saving the patient's life before addressing limb injuries and fractures. The Advanced Trauma Life Support Principles teach this systematic and concise approach to care and requires a team of nurses and doctors working collaboratively and simultaneously to address the ATLS principles. On patient's arrival to the trauma unit, you can run a quick survey to assess the general well-being of the patient. You can ask the patient their name and the events prior to this, and should the patient be able to respond accordingly, you can then say that their airway is patent, that they're breathing adequately, and that they're not as yet in hypovolemic shock. Proceed to your rapid primary survey. The A in the ABCDE of the ATLS principles stands for airway. Should the patient have a GCS score of 8 or less, a definitive airway needs to be put in place, such as an endotracheal tube. Should this fail, a surgical airway is put in place under rapid sequence induction. When securing the airway, one needs to always remember to protect the C-spine. The C-spine can be cleared clinically if the patient is awake or with a CT scan only after the patient is hemodynamically stable. In the interim, if uncertain of an injury to the C-spine, one can put on a hard C collar with a proper fit to protect the C-spine. In patients with multiple injuries, be on the lookout for a hemothorax or a tension pneumothorax, which will impede on adequate breathing. A tension pneumothorax is a clinical diagnosis that can be managed in your adult patient with a needle decompression followed by insertion of a chest tube in your fifth intercostal space between your mid and your anterior axillary line in your triangle of safety. To ensure adequate blood oxygen saturation of at least 95%, one must provide supplemental oxygen either non-invasively via an oxygen mask or CPAP or invasive techniques such as your mechanical ventilation in your intubated patients. Do not forget to run an arterial blood gas at this stage. C stands for circulation. Our main priorities here are to stop any external bleeding with direct pressure followed by insertion of a Foley's catheter and to fluid resuscitate following the massive transfusion protocol which includes minimal amounts of crystalloids followed by blood products. C stands for circulation. Our main priorities here are to stop any external bleeding with direct pressure followed by insertion of a Foley's catheter and to fluid resuscitate following the massive transfusion protocol, which includes minimal amounts of crystalloids followed by blood products. The Glasgow Coma Scale and lateralizing signs following trauma can be used to assess the current level of disability of the patient. Lastly, in your rapid primary survey, the patient is exposed to look for any open wounds that may need proper dressing, log roll the patient to expose the back and palpate each vertebra, address any fractures that may need reduction and immobilization, and do not forget to cover up the patient once you are done to prevent hypothermia. Here is the list of adjuncts which would have been used throughout your primary survey. Please note that although this presentation speaks of the areas of focus in an orderly manner, in your emergency patients, these areas of focus are addressed simultaneously by the team to reach one common goal. Only once your patient is hemodynamically stable can you move on to the secondary survey. This includes a thorough head-to-toe examination of each system using adjuncts such as your CT scan and other blood tests. Thank you for listening. We hope you found this video easy to follow and understandable.